Broadcasting live from the Capitol OTB studios, this is Racing Across America with Seth Merrow. Good morning and welcome to Racing Across America on this Sunday morning. I'm Seth Merrill. Thanks for joining us. Another cold Sunday morning in the Capital District. But looking at the weather, it looks like we're on a little bit of a warming trend for Christmas. I don't think we'll have a, I was going to say a white Christmas. We will have a white Christmas. We won't have snow coming down, it seems like, on Christmas because it looks like tomorrow they say 40s and then I think upper 30s the rest of the week, uh, which kind of precludes snow falling, but there's snow on the ground and it will still be on there. So we will have a white Christmas, uh, which is always good. But uh, weather here is going to moderate. However, down in the Tampa Bay area, uh, yesterday they announced early that they were going to cancel today's program. So if you're a Tampa fan, I am. Um, there's no Tampa today. They were uh, expecting uh, overnight some heavy rain and some winds. And so they were just, uh, the press release they sent out said they were going to err on the side of caution and uh, cancel for Sunday. So no Tampa uh, this afternoon. We'll uh, on OTB Live a little bit later on. We'll have some aqueducts, some golf streams, some fairgrounds, so we'll pull a little laurel into the mix for a Sunday afternoon uh, with Tampa on the sidelines. Also, another weather-related closing to announce, uh, make your plans. The traditional opening day at Santa Anita has now been moved. Traditional opening day at Santa Anita, always the day after Christmas. This year, not so. They're expecting some inclement weather uh, this week out in that uh, Los Angeles area. So they have postponed opening day at Santa Anita to December 28th. Uh, the card that was going to be drawn uh, will, uh, I think that I read, uh, will be drawn on Monday instead. Then it will, all the stakes that were going to be on opening day, they'll, they'll push to uh, next Saturday. Um, so again, opening day at Santa Anita postponed from Thursday until Saturday. Going to be interesting to see how the Santa Anita meet works out. Obviously with what happened last year, during the winter meet, uh, a lot of focus will be on Santa Anita, um, and they've kind of changed the rules, the uh, overseers out in California, uh, to, to recognize weather and uh, to have the track be a little more cognizant of weather. And, you know, it's a, it's a sport played outdoors, so we'll see what happens as the uh, Santa, you know, the, the, uh, the, Derby trail out there. Uh, how do you make plans if you have a three-year-old that you're you're thinking, oh, okay, let's the Bob Lewis and the uh, and, and weather comes up and and you know throws a monkey wrench into that. So we'll, as I say, we'll see. But uh, the situation right now this week, again, it's always fun the day after Christmas. Santa Anita opens up and some stakes action and whatnot. But that has been pushed back opening day at Santa Anita until Saturday. Let me just remind you before I get into it that uh, today is a football Sunday here at the Clubhouse Racebook. We would love to see you down here to enjoy the football action and the racing action. Still a few more weeks of NFL football action to uh, enjoy. And again, we have all the games to watch and all the racing action as well. Come down, grab a little lunch if you'd like to. Uh, but you can watch the games and the racing action as well here at the Clubhouse Racebook every Sunday during NFL action, 7-Eleven Central Avenue in Albany. All right, let's get to it. We'll kick things off with a little stakes recap. Uh, come back in a, uh, after a quick break a little bit later on, do a little handicapping for Sunday afternoon. Then I think we're actually going to wrap things up, make it kind of an abbreviated edition. Why? Because uh, once again, they're uh, programming a 10-race uh, card at Aqueduct. That means a noon post time, and I expect that means talking horses will come on probably about uh, 10.45 or so. And so with the 10.45 uh, kickoff for uh, Talking Horses, we'll kind of wrap things up uh, just before that so you can get to uh, Andy. Well, I don't know, Andy Sundays, it's not necessarily Andy. Probably the Big A, Big A, maybe Maggie? Big A, oh no, the David Eric. No, although I think he said, <laughs> it's gonna be a surprise, is it? I think Eric Gonis said he wasn't back until the new year when he was on last week. So it will be a surprise to see who's sitting in the uh, talking horses chair today. But again, I think it's gonna kick off a little bit earlier with the 10 race card at Aqueduct. And of course, uh, yesterday, I think I, I read 11 o'clock last night, first day of winter, uh, December 21st, um, which good and bad. Bad, obviously, first day of winter. So now there's three more one, months of winter. But the good, uh, the, the uh, uh, Winter solstice means 
yesterday was the longest, uh, or yesterday was the longest night, shortest uh, day of daylight. Uh, so then we march until uh, June 21st. We make that long march until June 21st where every day gets longer. So that's always a bonus. If you're like me and uh, you go out of work at the end of the day, you open the door uh, and walk out into the parking lot and it's dark, a little depressing, well, another, another month or so, you, you start to really see the change. And as I say, we march along until that nice uh, first day of... Uh, uh, summer where uh, you get the longest day of the year and you're, you know, it's late until what, nine o'clock or so, and obviously like that, you know, on the golf course at eight o'clock, still golfing and whatnot. Unfortunately, yesterday the shortest day, so we are still plenty of darkness, not so much daylight as we would like, but we're moving in the right direction now. All right, let's go to our uh, stakes recaps. And I mentioned yesterday the uh, result of last Sunday's uh, Springboard Mile out at Remington, and I said we'd uh, take a look at it today. Why? Because it's a race. It's a late season, rich, $400,000, two-year-old race that, you know, over the past 10 years or so has typically produced some horses that certainly have made a little noise on the Derby Trail, and some of them uh, can wind up in the Kentucky Derby. I think that'll be the case uh, this year. Answer in the number four horse for Brad Cox. This was only the third career start. He went off as a three to five favorite. Again, answer in is the number four horse, but a nice late run from number nine shoplifted for Steve Asmussen gets it done. Shoplifted uh, broke the maiden at Saratoga, followed that up with a second place finish in the hopeful, and then a couple of races out at San Anita disappointed a little bit. But Asmussen uh, would not put the horse away, and he said, let's go for the rich uh, money at Remington, and gets it done there. As you can see, a nice ding-dong battle over the promising Brad Cox horse. Embolden, the number eight, as you can see, was also right in the mix. Embolden was a little bit of a, a question mark. Went off at 11-1. to 1, uh, Was uh, trained by Mike Stidham, uh, a horse that had had five career starts prior to the race last Sunday. Four of them have been on the uh, turf, and the horse had shown talent, had not been out of the money. Uh, a couple of wins, a couple of seconds, and a third in five career starts for that number eight in Bolden. Um, but see, certainly seemed to uh, take to the dirt. The, the other dirt start in the career was a career debut at Monmouth, which was pretty good. So uh, they, they went over the turf and uh, made a little bit of money, but they tried to... Uh, their hand at the $400,000 last Sunday and wound up third. I think all three of these are, will be interesting to watch uh, going forward. Certainly shoplifted off of the uh, two starts up at Saratoga. And maybe just negative horse for a course out at San Anita. I like the horse shoplifted in uh, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile at 29-1. to 1. Had run uh, in the American Pharaoh prior to that. and run yeah, A little bit of a disappointing fifth in a field of nine in the American Pharaoh. But I thought, you know what? Uh, with that track surface that had been deepened a little bit out of Santa Anita. Maybe shoplifted would benefit from getting the start over the track and uh, improve in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Didn't, ran seventh in there. But as I say, you had to kind of appreciate the confidence that uh, Steve Asmussen and the team had saying, you know, let's not wrap up for the year. Let's take a shot for the majority of that $400,000 they're putting up uh, out at Remington. So shoplifted, uh, certainly going to be one to pay attention to. Uh, answer in for uh, Brad Cox again, and only the third career start, just getting beat by a chart margin of a head, and emboldened for uh, Mike Stidham. Uh, three, probably that are worth keeping your eyes on as we, uh, you know, the calendar changes uh, on January 1st, and these all become three-year-olds, and you would expect them to kind of march along the uh, the Derby Trail at whatever venues. With Brad Cox, Brad Cox and Asmussen. You're thinking either Oakland or Fairgrounds probably. Mike Stidham, I don't know what, what he will play in with uh, in Bolden. But, again, we'll keep our eyes on those. Uh, shipped over to Aqueduct yesterday, the Queens County. Nice field in here. Uh, I thought Major Cabby for Peter Miller could be the one to uh, get it done. I put that one on top and stand the man right underneath. Stand the man hadn't been seen since June. If you've been around the game as long as I have, you know layoffs like that used to be an automatic toss, virtually. Uh, most trainers are off for six months or so. Hey, let me get a, a race into my horse. That is not the case anymore. They typically come back uh, and are ready to run for the most part. Um, but you just never know whether, no matter what the trainer's intention, 
how fit will the horse be? And so I put Stan the Man right underneath with Major Cabby on top. Unfortunately for me, Major Cabby, they're off, you lose. Major Cabby kind of went to his nose at the start of the race and dumped Jackie Jr. Alvarado. Horse and rider were fine. Subsequently, the number three uh, Adventist uh, makes a nice run at 28 to one to run second. Number two, however, is Stan the Man getting it done. You see the nice late run here from the long shot to uh, really uh, get up there and give Stan the Man all he could ask for. But Stan the Man, as the second choice, gets it done. Major Cabby, betting public, was with me, made that one the 6-5 to five choice. At 5-2, to two, Stan the Man gets it done off the long layoff. But at 28-1, to one, the rank outsider in the field, Adventist, gets up to uh, run second. Uh, coming in from uh, the uh, parks base for Uriah St. Louis, Adventist, uh, exacta, dollar exacta, with again the second choice on top, $7.40 for Stan the Man, exacta for a buck $72. So it would have been a tough, tough pull though with uh, Adventist. Running third was uh, Han Sense, another one that uh, would have been a tough call. I didn't use that one in the mix either. As I say, I'd stay in the man right underneath. Bon Raison, I thought was going to be a little bit interesting. That one wound up six in the field of seven. And with uh, Major Cabby losing the, the jockey, essentially Bon Raison is eight, uh, last of the, the field. That uh, And there's the stumble right there and Junior Alvarado. And again, Junior Alvarado subsequently uh, uh, got right up and, and walked off with his own power. The horse was okay. He went around the track. Um, but as I say, they're off, you lose, uh, as far as me and Major Cabby. But Stan the Man, uh, you know, you'd expect uh, aiming for a, a winter stake season uh, in New York. Uh, there are some nice stakes, of course, down at Laurel that they could probably ship out for uh, John Terranova and his team. But uh, the comeback race, good-looking uh, win in the Queens County yesterday at uh, Aqueduct off the substantial layoff. Uh, nice grade three uh, sprint stake down at Gulfstream. Um, the grade three Mr. Prospector, Imperial Hint in here, uh, coming out of a win in the Vosburg, just before that had won the Vanderbilt up at Saratoga. XY Jet, who had not been seen since March, and a win in the Golden Shaheen over in Dubai. Uh, Diamond Oops coming out of an eighth place finish in the uh, Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, but three back in the Vanderbilt ran second behind Imperial Hint with a triple digit buyer figure. So Diamond Oops was maybe a little bit interesting as well. And as they came under the wire, Diamond Oops, very interesting. You can see XY Jet, the number three out there, going to fade badly to run last in the field after putting up fractions of 21 and change, 43 and change. He just throws in the towel, XY Jet. Number six is Diamond Oops. He'll make a nice sustained run to get it done at a uh, $9 mutual. Lasting Legacy, the number five horse, Brian Addo on the handicapper support, uh, Lake Lasting Legacy. That one runs second just by a neck over a number two, Imperial Hint. Um, and again, Imperial Hint was kind of out there chasing that early pace um, and... Uh, Connections of Imperial Hint said, yeah, maybe the seven furlongs just a little beyond his scope. But certainly uh, off of those early fractions, it was going to be tough to to hang on. Imperial, Imperial Hint, uh, gutsy uh, third by a neck from the second place finisher. But XY Jet, uh, with those early fractions, winds up really just getting kind of eased uh, at the end and finishes last in the field of six. Diamond Dupes, however, again, nice win at uh, $9 Mutual. Patrick Biancone, uh, Julian Lepero, or that again, you, you would have to have looked at the race, and with the triple-digit three-back, think, eh, contender in there. Uh, most people clearly keying on either Imperial Hint or XY Jet, but pace makes the race, and there was a uh, substantial duel in there, and Diamond Oops, the beneficiary. All right, let's go over to uh, Fairgrounds. They had a nice slate of stakes action yesterday. That was hurt a little bit by the weather. Uh, they were off the turf yesterday, so the turf stakes uh, moved off. But there were still some performances on the card yesterday that are worth remembering as we go forward. And the nice, I, I mentioned it, we talked to Joe Christofek 
yesterday. The paddock commentator from uh, Fairgrounds we talked to him on Racing Across America and mentioned this kind of kicks off a nice stakes series that goes through their season down at Fairgrounds for the various divisions. Unfortunately, as I say, some of the turf uh, races didn't play out the way we would have wanted with the switch to the main track, but there are some horses to watch, and we're going to kick off with one of those, the Letelier Memorial uh, for two-year-old fillies. <laughs> Six furlongs the trip. Taraz, the number two horse, uh, good-looking debut winner at Churchill. And when we talked to Joe Christofek, he said before that race, there was a little buzz on Taraz. Boy, Taraz looked great yesterday. The number two horse, Taraz, chart margin of over 11 lengths as the two to five favorite. Ursula, the number six horse for Mike Stidham, had broken the maiden just prior at the end of no November uh, fairgrounds. That one was an okay second, was well clear of the third place finisher. No match for the winner, though. So Taraz gets it done for Brad Cox and Judd Mott. Second start, second huge win. Look at this, just kind of runs away and hides from this field. Adding her name to a two-year-old Philly division that really, I mean, Lake Avenue, Basque, British Idiom, and speaking of British Idiom, also a Brad Cox horse. And so the follow-up uh, article I read said British Idiom probably will be the Cox runner that will follow the, the fairgrounds trail for the two-year-old fillies. And they speculated in the article, Taraz may look more towards uh, Oaklawn, the Martha Washington up next perhaps for Taraz. Um, as again, he Brad Cox, two clearly very potent two-year-old fillies. But as they say, she throws her hat in the ring in a division that at this point looks very good. You always uh, kind of temper your, your thoughts because it seems like just when you get excited about a particular division, then they get going and things maybe fall apart. But at this point, two-year-old fillies uh, in another week or so to being on three-year-old fillies on the Kentucky Oaks Trail, that division it just looks um, blockbuster at this point and Taraz uh, tosses her head into the ring as another one that uh, we will have to watch in that division. Moving on to the Bonapaw, again this was one of the races that was moved off uh, the turf. Uh, sprint race, uh, five and a half furlongs, and again originally scheduled for the uh, the turf. I liked Wilbo, I put Pete's play call underneath. They were both horses I speculated when I handicapped yesterday on OTB Live. I speculated. I wonder if both the trainers thought, both maybe looked at the weather and thought, you know what, this race might come off. Let me put in my horse. Because they both looked like the surface switch was not going to be an obstacle. It was not for either one of them. Pete's Playcall gets it done, and Wilbo is right there. Pete's Playcall is the number four. Wilbo's the number nine. And Pete's Playcall just kind of gets the jump on Wilbo and then Wilbo just can't make up the ground in the stretch. You can see him kind of pulling away here, both of them. And Pete's play call pulls away. Chart margin at two and a quarter, but Wilbo uh, clear by four of the third place finisher. Wilbo went off as the favorite, the eight to five favorite. Uh, Pete's play call was the second choice at three to one. And uh, again, they you, you looked at the past performances and they were going to be the horses that certainly were going to run very well, regardless of the surface switch. And uh, I really do kind of speculate the trainers maybe looking at the uh, forecast a little bit and thinking, yeah, you know what, I'll jump in and uh, I have a good dirt, or good, good dirt sprinter. And it may just work out that way uh, as far as the weather uh, plays out. And it did for both of them with Pete's play call, getting it done for uh, Mike Maker and team. A little bit later on, uh, the uh, Blushing KD. These are Phillies and Mayors, three-year-olds and up. Again, scheduled for the turf. Um, and this one was a little more unpredictable as far as where do you go on the dirt. And um, not a Prada Price is going to be the winner in here. Most of the starts in the career, I'm just looking, 22 starts in the career, uh, 27 starts in the career, 22 of those were on turf. Did have some dirt form, though, and I guess you had to go. There was one off-the-turf race on the page that looked pretty good. <coughs> Excuse me, and she lives up to it here. Chart margin is 6.5. Stave, the number 10 horse, runs second by 3.5, and, a half, and uh, Avi's Mineshaft runs third. As I say, you're kind of guessing, uh, though, because uh, the winner, mostly turf, Stave, Mostly turf. Stave, I'm looking. Stave was all turf. 16 starts uh, in the career. They were all on the turf. So this was a little bit of a guessing game 
Um, but if you guessed right, you had uh, no uh, reason to, to question your, your guess in the uh, lane. It's not a pot of price. looked pretty good and uh, was clearly going to be the winner uh, all the way down the stretch. Uh, chart margin, as I say, over six lengths. And he got rewarded. $15 and change. Uh, Dave went off at 8-1. to one. The favorite, Oh My Santana, excuse me, Oh My, with Ricardo Santana. 9-5 uh, to five favorite, runs last in the field of seven in there. Steve Asmussen, trainee. That also, another horse that most of the starts were on the turf, but did have some dirt form like the top pick. But again, these kind of races, they're just, they're puzzles. Um, you know, who's going to take to it? Who's going to take to it that day? Um, because off tracks at different venues can be very different. So um, it was not a product price, though. Uh, in the Sugar Bowl, this one scheduled for the main track. And on the main track, the uh, storyline here was uh, the winner, the trainer of the winner, Steve Asmussen. We had mentioned it. Uh, Joe Christofek mentioned it. Uh, Gold Street, the number two horse, trained by Steve Asmussen. This was career stakes win number 999. And Joe Christofek mentioned Steve Asmussen sitting on the uh, brink of a career milestone with a thousand stakes victories sitting out there waiting for his next stakes victory as this made 999 for Asmussen. Gold Street gets it done amongst second. Axiomo runs third. Sh -sh Shake me up the horse I liked, and that one was the two to one favorite. The winner, the, the Asmussen horse, did go off as the favorite. Uh, Sh -sh Shake me up for Keith DeSormo coming off of a pretty good looking uh, debut win up at Churchill. Wound up a little bit of a disappointing um, fourth in the field of six at two to one. I did mention. Looked good in the career debut, but it was worth noting that was restricted main special race, which was that condition that appeared out this year up at Saratoga. Uh, horses that sold for $45,000 or less at auction. There were a couple up at Saratoga that, that turned out to be pretty nice, but you do have to take that into consideration. Yeah, these are horses that are winning main special uh, weight races, but they are at a, uh, a lower class level. Um, she she looked good. She put in a good buyer number, um, but the follow-up in the stakes race, as I say, a little bit disappointing. Fourth place finish, but I want to see what she does next. She, she shake me up. I want to see what she does next um, because, again, you're stepping out of a, a debut win in the stakes company, sloppy track. Um, I think the DeSormo horse probably is more talented than we saw yesterday. But Gold Street for uh, Steve Asmussen gets it done. That horse had taken four starts to break the maiden. Um, did it at Churchill uh, at the end of November and then followed up uh, with the stakes win. So it just seems like, it, and it's not, that last one wasn't a light bulb moment. She had been running well in the previous uh, starts. The career debut at Ellis was a little bit of a dud, but clearly benefited from that one. Followed up with a couple of second place finishes, then the maiden breaker and now this one. So again, it wasn't like yeah, it took four starts to kind of figure it out. She was running well, or he was running well uh, prior to that. It, it's just uh, kind of found the right field, broke through, and then uh, maybe just improving a little bit to uh, get it done on uh, Saturday. But again, also that side story. Steve Asmussen, he winds up career stakes victory 999, one away from, uh, again, I'm, I'm not talking victories. I'm talking stakes victories. One away from a thousand stakes victories in his career. The Buddy Deliberto Memorial. Again, another one of those uh, races that was knocked off the turf. This one fell apart a little bit after scratches. Wound up with only a field of five in here. But it winds up to be Captivating Moon. This is a horse that uh, had some nice stakes experience going back on the page a little bit. The most recent experience had been... Uh, in optional claiming company at Churchill, but more notably had been on the main track at Churchill. Going back, there was some more, a higher class level of turf experience, but regardless of the class, had that dirt experience at Churchill coming in. And Captivating Moon gets it done, benefits from that uh, for uh, trainer Chris Block. Space Mountain for Mike Maker winds up running uh, second. And again, this was a horse with Space Mountain, 30 uh, turf starts and 32 career 
uh, starts. So again, another one of those uh, kind of question marks given the surface switch. That one, however, did juice up the exact, I suppose, a little bit. Um, you know, you had the favorite on top, four dollars in a five-horse field, but eight to one on Space Mountain. The exacta for a buck twelve, just under thirteen dollars. Um, but as I say, you were kind of guessing a little bit with uh, Space Mountain and horses like Space Mountain on a day where uh, turf racing was uh, moved to the main track down at the fairgrounds. Finally, uh, stakes action. We're going to look at one more race after this, a non-stake that uh, had some implications. But uh, the stakes action wrapped up with the tenacious um, Blended Citizen was very interesting to me, coming out of a win in an optional claimer up at Churchill. Blended Citizen from Brad Cox. That one, the number two horse, will run second as the nine to five favorite. Pioneer Spirit, however, this horse is very interesting. Won the last race at Churchill. It was an optional claimer. Won it with a triple digit buyer figure. It was an optional claimer where you had to think, oh, now, this horse won't get claimed. $150,000, the tag. Brad Cox was the trainer. Well, Brad Cox and company lost the horse. Uh, the team jumped in for $150,000, and Robertino Diodoro, now the trainer, and Pioneer Spirit, uh, now for uh, Robertino Diodoro, holding off Blended Citizen for Brad Cox. Lone Sailor, the horse we talked about with Joe Christofek, who just seemed to, have, throughout the career, has had all kinds of promise. Uh, blown still the number one horse and just kind of hasn't lived up to it. As far as getting the wins, this the lone sailor, a horse with over a million dollars in earnings, but winds up third in there. Pioneer Spirit, Blended Citizen, Lone Sailor. And as I, gave, as I say, Pioneer Spirit, interesting in that uh, claim last time, pays off uh, right after the claim uh, for the new connections. Jumped in for $75,000. And they wind up a little stakes win uh, in the first start. They're still chasing their 75, though, because the uh, first place for the stake yesterday was only uh, uh, 40, $46,000. So they paid $150,000 for the horse uh, in the claim and got uh, 46 some. So yeah, they still have a ways to go to, to pay off the claim. Finally, wanted to show the uh, 13th from uh, Fairgrounds yesterday. We talked about it with Joe Christofek, wanted to show it because uh, it was Mr. Monomoy, the sibling to Monomoy girl. We talked about this race uh, again with uh, Joe Christofek, and as he was saying, and there were some other two-year-olds in here that were also kind of classy. It was one of those optional claimer allowance races for two-year-olds late in the year that clearly had uh, at least a few in here that will be worth watching going forward. Mr. Monomoy, obviously, is the sibling of Monomoy Girl coming out of the nice maiden breaker at Churchill last time. But Lynn's map for Mark Cassie, like Mr. Monomoy, uh, took two starts to break the maiden, broke the maiden last time up at Churchill, did it with a pretty good buyer number, a little bit of breeding, Mark Cassie barn. Um, so, uh, and I'm being told we don't have the, the replay, but you can take my word for it. Um, Lynn's map winds up to be the winner. Third career start for uh, Mark Cassie. So uh, that's one I think is going to be worth watching. The chart margin, however, was only ahead over Mr. Monomoy. So again, it was one of those late season two-year-old races where there's enough class to think, you know what? Some of these could come out of this uh, that, that will be worth watching going forward. And as the results played out, I think those two will be worth watching going forward. So, again, Lynn's map and uh, Mr. Monomoy, third career start for both of them. And we'll see. Uh, you would think being based at the fairgrounds, they would uh, take that fairgrounds kind of path to the Louisiana Derby and the, the uh, Kentucky Derby. Although, down there uh, and with, you know, trainers like Cassie, and Brad Cox, uh, they, can, they can bounce around. They can w wind up with other horses in their barn that, that will, oh, th this one's more suited to fairground, so let's take this one, go over to Oaklawn or over to Gulfstream. But, uh, again, they're both worth paying attention to going forward. All right, we'll take a break. When we come back, uh, a little quick look at uh, some handicapping for this afternoon. As I say, we'll wrap up a little early. I would expect probably yeah, 10 minutes away maybe from uh, Talking Horses on a, a Sunday where first post at Aqueduct will be at noontime. So we'll take a break, come back, 
give you a couple ideas for uh, this Sunday afternoon. Stay tuned. Wagering on horse racing just got a lot easier at Capital OTB with our newly designed state-of-the-art mobile wagering site. Everything you need is right here on one easy-to-navigate mobile platform. Set your favorite tracks, pick your horses, place your bets, all with a simple tap of the screen. Plus, you'll have access to Capital OTB TV for all our network programming. So log on to CapitalOTBBet.com and see just how easy wagering on horse racing can be. destination to live work and play with easy connections to more than a dozen cities from our vibrant modern airport it's a short trip downtown to a hive of culture and amusement from world-class shows at the newly renovated times union center to reliving the past at the new york state museum from outdoor recreation to shopping to nightlife albany county has something for everyone we'll see you soon Here's some exciting news from Capital OTB. Capital Off-Track Betting and the Rivers Casino have partnered to bring you the finest experience in wagering on all your favorite thoroughbred and harness tracks from right inside the casino. Our newest location is open daily and can be found at Vance Flicks Bar, offering live tellers, self-serve betting terminals, racing information kiosks, and all the amenities you've come to expect from Capital OTB. See you at the Rivers Casino in Schenectady. hour or so uh, but right now racing across america on a sunday morning seth Merrow in the studio uh and we will take a look now at uh give us some ideas maybe for the lake pick four at aqueduct and i just pulled up scratches are up already so far at this point only a couple of scratches sixth race number three alvernia is out tenth race number two i saw it all is out so at this point a uh, couple of scratches uh neither of which affect uh, my thoughts on the day um, in the sixth race at Aqueduct, which does kick off that, uh, actually that kicks off the late pick five, but, uh, because you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. there are 10 races today, but so we'll, we'll bang through the, uh, the, uh, pick five, late pick five. I have the sixth race, six, four, two, and five. Awesome. Alana on top. It's a Chad Brown runner, uh, went through a non-winner. So one condition last time at Aqueduct. The numbers may be a little bit light compared to a couple others in here. Um, Veradia, uh, last couple of numbers are better. Um, but that one was claimed and moves into a new barn, moves out of the Asmussen barn. So I was willing to take a little shot against. She takes charge, uh, has perhaps better numbers. But I just thought there was maybe a little upside potential for a lately raced a uh, three-year-old from the Chad Brown barn with awesome Alana. So I'll put that one on top, but she takes charge. Also lightly raced, also maybe has some upside potential. Comes out of a, a nice second place finish last time in a very similar event. Should be primed for a good effort today. And then for 80, as I say, with a couple of good numbers recently as compared to this bunch, uh, also worth paying attention to. So, I, you know, pick five purposes. I could see going with the, the uh, six and the four. Uh, trying to get through with those two. Um, but Veradia, particularly with the early speed, uh, you may regret as they hit the turn if she has a couple of links uh, in front of the rest of them. So, uh, again, it all depends on where you want to pare down a little bit and where you want to go a little wider. But for me in race number six, I have it six, four, two, and five. <coughs> race number seven, uh, $40,000 claimers. Going six and a half, I have it eight, seven, one, and five. I put earned success on top for Linda Rice. Why not? She was red hot yesterday. Uh, she went end of the day with at least four winners. Um, it was a very nice day yesterday for Linda Rice, and uh, we'll see if she can continue that. She has a couple in here that I have on top. Earned success, claimed last time out from Chad Brown and Klarovich. 
Uh, they dropped the horse in for the $40,000 tag. Could only uh, wind up second, um, but I think show that this class level is right in the wheelhouse. And you look underneath, this horse had r raced, raced competitively against better, um, but some of that was last season. Came back at the end of Saratoga for uh, the 2019 seasonal debut and uh, wound up running third against uh, better. Then they followed up uh, at a, an optional 50 level down at Parks and was a little bit of a disappointing fourth before that race last time at Aqueduct where the horse ran second in and amongst this 40 uh, claiming uh, level. As I say, I have a feeling maybe, you know, we're three races into the 2019 season. This 40 level overall might be right within the wheelhouse. The buyer number went backwards a little bit last time, but the first two buyers of this season were much better. I look for earned success to break through uh, now in the Linda Rice barn, but Monteleone also for Linda Rice. This one uh, has been racing over at Parks in the last three starts for Linda Rice, has been doing so with some success. A uh, couple of uh, off the out of the money finishes uh, bookend a win. There are some back numbers that are okay, but Linda Rice was so good yesterday. I tossed this one into the mix. Blessed Halo, uh, maybe off of that last number for uh, Brad Cox is maybe that one should have been the second choice. I was a little concerned about the uh, the inside post position as well. Chris Engelhardt has aristocratic, who has plenty of early speed. Faded badly last time, but that was against better. This is now second off the claim and getting a little class relief that's going to put this horse between the claim, claiming price and, and the race last time, and I think probably better suited to this. Reed Kahn scares me a little bit. This is a, an interesting race that I think you could go four or five different directions and have an equal amount of confidence or lack thereof. But in the seventh race, I have an eight, seven, one, and five. Race number eight at Aqueduct uh, on Sunday afternoon. Allowance non winners are one other than the one turn mile. I have a five, seven, eight, and two. Newly minted on top, it is again Linda Rice. Uh, this is a horse that has had plenty of stakes experience throughout the career. Last time, uh, bounced back into this non winners of one other than, I say bounced back in, really had never tried it. Broke the maiden in the career debut, and then a steady string of five stakes races. So, Popped into the non-winners of one uh, allowance level. That, again, is the proper condition. Uh, although I say that, this horse, career debut victory, and then the first couple of stakes, won. So this is a horse, actually, with uh, four victories overall, three of them stakes races. How, this, how is this horse in the non-winners of one other than? Stakes were all New York bred stakes. So this is a classy horse um, that... Last time tried this company, went off as the uh, uh, three to five favorite and uh, had a little trouble at the start, could only wind up second. This horse, as I say though, pretty classy performer. Linda Rice going well right now, newly minted. Maybe, and I'm just looking, proximity bias for Chad Brown. It's Chad and Klarovich. They are always a, a team you have to pay attention to. Lightly raced, uh, has some upside potential. So. That one is certainly one to pay attention to. Um, Private Beach, I had in the third spot, the, the number fired two back certainly stacks up. Yeah, it's competitive with the top pick, but newly minted has the look of maybe one. If you want to pare down your ticket and go a little deeper on either side, newly minted maybe one that you can kind of focus on in that uh, late pick five sequence. The eighth at Aqueduct, five, seven, eight, and two. Feature race on the Sunday card at Aqueduct is the Gravesend, $100,000 up for grabs, three quarters of a mile. Um, uh, I, yeah, okay, I forgot. <laughs> Here, here's also where you may pare down. <coughs> Frenzy fire, at least to maybe have this group over a barrel. One thing Jason Service does, he will spot nice runners like this. Uh, it, you know, he, he, he uh, Paul, call Paul for Michael Dub. They have a horse and... Is Call Paul necessarily a grade one type winner? Probably on a given day, but they know what they have and they kind of pick their spots and Call Paul has been bounced around and has picked up some very nice purses uh, shopping around for some 
some nice spots. And I think, you know, the ungraded $100,000 Graves End for Forensic Fire is going to be a, it looks like potentially an easy payday. Comes out of a win in uh, a stakes race at Penn National. Uh, had run fifth in the Breeders' Cup Sprint just before that behind Matoli and Chancellot and Whitmore. Uh, just missed in the Vosburg, three starts back behind Imperial Hint, all with triple-digit buyers. Looks to kind of lay over this field. So, again, uh, the, the, this may be the race where you can pare it down. If you're looking for an upset, minor upset, Happy Farm, because it's also Jason Service, and it's one of those, you know, the, the longer half of the uncoupled entry, and you always say, hey, the trainer knows what he has in the other horse, so would he take a shot unless he thought, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm live in here. Um, so Happy Farm being, the uh, again, the uncoupled half, uh, the longer half of the uncoupled entry uh, for Jason Service. Uh, this is a horse with uh, a four-race win streak coming in as well, including last time the fall high weight. So Happy Farm, again, if you're looking for one to maybe – uh, upset the apple cart a little bit because you know late pick five tickets the vast vast majority will have frenzy fire so if you can get that one beaten um, and happy fire may be the alternative to look for the ninth race at aqueduct gravesend two six four and one and finally race number 10 at aqueduct uh, wrapping up today a little after four quarter about quarter after four uh conditional claimers going six and a half i have it seven five thirteen and twelve the number seven beachfront Jeremiah Englehart trainee. It's that time of year. It's one of those horses. Uh, this horse, m most of the starts of the career have been on the turf. The last few starts have been pretty good. Uh, improving efforts. Finally broke the maiden in uh, career start number seven. But again, did it on the turf. But there, there's a dirt start underneath that is okay. It's Normally I tilt away from these, but you can't always. Sometimes it just it seems like, eh. Maybe this horse will be okay on the dirt. Legion Storm in the second spot. This one, clearly more dirt meant and also in good form. Uh, the, the logical uh, alternative, again, given uh, the, the turf affinity for beachfront. And impunity in the third spot. Another one that seems in good form. Took a while to break the maiden, but sometimes they break it, and then they just get in good form and continue on. So 10th race at Aqueduct, 7, 5, 13, and 12. All right, that's going to wrap it up. I'm looking up uh, at our signal up here, and it says Talking Horses, Ant Andy Serling and Anthony Stabile. So Andy uh, takes some Sundays off, but looks like he'll be in this afternoon. Post time at Aqueduct is noontime, so I would expect Talking Horses to so start up sooner rather than later, so I will step out. Uh, don't forget, it's an NFL Sunday here at the Clubhouse Racebook. We'd love to see you swing by and enjoy all the football action and all the racing action, 7-Eleven, Central Avenue in Albany. Seth Merrow in here for uh, a Racing Across America Sunday edition, but as I say, we'll make it an abbreviated edition with uh, Talking Horses, and it looks like the Naira signal is starting to fire up. So Talking Horses right around the corner with a noontime post at Aqueduct. I'll be back uh, with uh, OTV Live in probably about an hour or so with the noon post at Aqueduct. We'll jump in before that first race. This afternoon on OTB Live, we'll take a look at Aqueduct, Gulfstream, Fairgrounds, and a little Laurel. Again, a note, Tampa Bay Downs canceled for today. They did it yesterday. They were expecting inclement weather, so no Tampa today. Also, I noted at the top of the show, uh, opening day at Santa Anita has been moved. Typically, it's the day after Christmas, so it would have been Thursday, but they're expecting some inclement weather out there, so opening day at Santa Anita now moved to next Saturday, so keep that in mind as well. All right, I'm going to step out, be back in about an hour, enjoy talking horses, and we'll see you in a few. You're watching OTB TV, a service of Capital Off-Track Betting.